More and more, Tim and I had the house to ourselves. At Dad's insistence, Jim got his driver's license in South Dakota at age 15. He and Bill were never home, leaders in citywide evangelical youth activities. Tim and I had always been a pair, sharing the same room, same toys, same dreams. I was always telling him fantastic stories that entertained me as much as him. With Jim and Bill gone and their train set packed up, we staked out our own territory in the basement and there our fantasies came alive. Without Jim and Bill, I became more of my mother's focus of attention. She was a piano teacher and being one of her students was sometimes awkward. Christmas 1957, our old friends, the Zinks, stopped by. It was about this year that Tim and I started sneaking into the living room after everyone had gone to bed. We pretended to be lions or tigers crawling around the floor in the dark. It evolved into a raucous family game. Christmas 1958 would be unforgettable. Leroy and Willa Sturgis joined us like old times. Little did we know as Dad carved the turkey that year it would be our last Christmas in Indianapolis. In the late summer of 1957, when he'd returned from Wyoming, the Assemblies of God held their general council in Cleveland, and Dad was elected to the 13-man national board. He was an executive presbyter now, as well as a district superintendent. His blistering pace of activity was gaining national attention. He was the youngest district superintendent leading the fastest growing state in what was then the fastest growing Christian movement in the world, still breaking ground on a new church every month. Willa Short, now Willa Sturgis, was co-pastoring with her husband in Kansas City. Her great meetings of thousands, a thing of the past. The attention was all on dad now, but the denomination was a gerontocracy. No one ever retired. He would grow old waiting for his chance at national leadership. More and more he wondered about missions work or pastoring again, but how could he pastor after leading pastors? Bill was winning awards on his high school debate team. Dad would use a South Dakota address to help him get his license early too. Everything Bill did was early. He would graduate from high school two, two full years ahead of his peer group. Me, I was a grade school track star and a Dodger fan. Jim was elected citywide president of the Indianapolis Youth for Christ, organized by the talented Billy Zioli. It was the largest group of its kind. Jim would star in the first Ken Anderson movie, Silent Witness. Leaders in the wider evangelical community flew in from Wheaton and Boca Raton to watch the premiere. Always in a hurry, he graduated from high school mid-semester enrolled in CBI, the school mom and dad went to when they had met. Perhaps more importantly, he had a full scholarship since dad was on the board of directors. And yes, mid-semester, Jim would be elected president of his freshman class. He was the rock star in the Weed family. <laughs> 